Good morning and welcome to Tech Tuesday. Thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, we're going to take a quick look at two uh, collaborative tools you can use for student collaboration. Um, my name is Heather Hickey and I'm here with the program staff and my partner Sarah Roche. Morning. She'll be joining us to answer your questions. So you can use the link to the document that we've sent you. You can also use the hashtag DP Chats on Twitter and Yammer and we'll be answering your questions. So we'll get started. I'm just going to flip over to the other screen. OK. So this morning, again, we're just looking at the skills and attribute of today's learner. And we'll be highlighting the collaboration piece. Again, we'll be examining um, how you can use Padlet in your classroom and Excel survey in Office 365 this morning. So we're going to begin. OK, so we're going to get started with Padlet just by opening up your internet browser and coming up to padlet.com. And with Padlet, the teachers will create an account. Students will not create an account. And the first time you come to Padlet.com, it'll prompt you through there to create that account. And then once you come in, this will be your home screen. And where we call your dashboard is where all your Padlets will be stored. So Padlets are like an interactive bulletin board where uh, you can have students collaborate and add information to. Um, same similar activities that you may in the past have used chart paper and post-its for. Now you'll be able to use an interactive, uh, more digital platform for that where students can add multimedia pieces and videos or text or link. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into just an example for you. So if I were um, in a primary classroom or a junior classroom, you can see here I've got just a very plain bulletin board going on, and I've po put a virtual post-it, if you will, uh, posing a question out to my students. So if we were looking at the virtues and uh, the learning skills together, uh, we probably would be having a conversation around responsibility. So here I'm just posing to the students, what are some of your responsibilities at home or at school? So on this virtual bulletin board, they can click anywhere and up will come their vir virtual post-it. And you'll notice that there's an area for a title and for text. So usually what I do is have them put their first name or initials or if they have a student number so I can identify who they are. And then they can type. If they have speech to text features on the device they're using, they can use that as well. You'll notice as I hover over here, oops. there we go. As I hover over here, there's some options. So you can see if they click there, they actually can add a link from the web, upload a picture or a file or a voice note or a video here. Or if they're on a mobile device, they can actually uh, take a photo, which comes in really great uh, if you're using the tablets or the iPads. Uh, an example in math, perhaps, would be if you were studying 3D shapes, you could have your students go around with the tablet and take actual photos of uh, 3D shapes they see around the room, and those would then be uploaded for a conversation or consolidation here. So as the teacher, how do you set this up? Well, as soon as you create a new Padlet, and I'm just going to go ahead uh, and create a new one so you can see how I went about that. If you notice here on the right hand side of your Padlet, there's um, a little toolbar for you. So where it says create a new Padlet, I'm going to go ahead and do that. And it starts simply with a plain image here. So I'm going to come down to this little button where it says modify this Padlet. And you'll notice that it gives you the option to title your Padlet. And also a description that you can add. This comes in handy when you have many Padlets on the go to keep track of that. 
You can choose one of these images or add one of your own to go along with your title if you like. Right underneath that, you're going to notice where it says wallpaper. So if you choose wallpaper, as soon as you click any of these, it's going to change the background on your bulletin board for you. You'll notice here where it says layout. It gives you three options to choose from. Freeform is going to allow you to move student responses around. So if many students have added some, I'm just going to come back to modify, come back to layout and show you what that looks like. So for freeform, I can drag and move these around, which is really helpful if you are trying to maybe group or organize some thoughts that are coming in from your students. If you're looking to perhaps organize those in a linear fashion, you have the option of stream. And you also have the option of grid, which is just going to maximize the screen space display for you. When you're going through and setting up your Padlet, you'll notice as you move down the tools here, the next one is privacy. Uh, what I'd like to choose is this one called hidden link. These private uh, options require a sign in and a login with an email. So with our younger students, uh, we're not going to do that. We don't want to put any public information in here. Uh, at the very bottom, you're going to notice that there's an option here to moderate posts. And if I select the moderate posts, what's going to happen is as the teacher, you control your bulletin board and you will have to okay anything the students post before it is seen on the shared platform. So if you're concerned or if this is one of your first attempts doing some uh, collaboration on an online space, you may choose to moderate those posts just to uh, be sure the students are responding in appropriate ways. Underneath that, you'll notice there's notifications. So some teachers uh, perhaps will use a Padlet as a homework piece, and they like to receive an email um, notifying them that someone has added to the Padlet. So depending on its use, you may choose to do that as well. And right underneath there is your address and when you click there you'll notice it gives you a link so what I like to do is just copy and paste that link and then I can either paste that up uh, somewhere for students to physically type in or I can send that out to them through a shared document perhaps in Office 365. You also have the option if you notice there's a shared export button on the main toolbar. If you click that it also generates a QR code for you. So if you are using mobile devices with the students or tablets uh, with QR code readers, you could have this open. The students could just scan that and they would automatically be in your Padlet. So that's the basics of creating a Padlet. And when you come up to the top here where it says home page, you'll notice all of my saved Padlets are here. Uh, if I just open up an, another one, you can see I've actually, as the wallpaper, I've uh, used a picture of a graphic organizer and I've allowed it to stay in the free form where we can um, actually drag and move responses around. So just a visual way that you can add to your Padlets. Again, you can use this um, collaborative, collaboratively <laughs> with students and uh, with younger students, you may use this in a shared or modeled experience as well to get them used to that space. And that's the basics of Padlet. Great. And now that we've taken a look at Padlet, we're going to go ahead and explore Excel Survey, which is offered to you through Office 365. So we will start by going into your Internet Explorer and logging into your Office 365 account. And when you come in here, you'll see the choice of icons. And the one icon we're going to go to today is Excel Online. So as we come in here, if you're familiar with Excel, you'll notice there's some templates for you to choose from. But I'm going to go ahead and choose a new blank workbook. And we're going to be creating a survey that you can use for many different purposes. Uh, whether it's a 
quick exit ticket or a more formal uh, assessment of learning. And I'll show you how to create that. So you'll notice at the top that it automatically defaults a name to your workbook here. So you can go ahead and just click there and change the name of that. This will automatically save into your OneDrive space. And you'll notice along the toolbar here, there's an option called Survey. And when you click that, it will allow you to create a new survey. And simply, you'll start building the questions that you have that you would like answered. So again, you just click in here, and you can rename the title and give it a description, depending on what that was. And automatically, it generates a question for you. And when you click on that, you'll notice there's an edit question box that comes up. And you have a choice of entering in your question, uh, a subtitle if you want a description for it, the type of response you're looking for. So it gives you a choice between text, which would be a, a short amount of characters, a paragraph text for longer answers, a number, numerical answers, a date answer, a time answer, a yes or no, and a multiple choice answer. So usually for the first question, usually what I do is have the students, oops, just go ahead and delete that. I just make the first question name, um, and I keep that as just a short text. I check the required box, which means students uh, won't be able to submit without answering that. And then I click done, and it'll generate that first question. When I'm ready to continue to build, I just go to add a new question, and we start that process over again, uh, choosing the types of questions. So again, depending on what your survey is for, just a quick example of perhaps a multiple choice. And you'll notice that, again, it just automatically defaults into that. You can delete that. And each response you want as one of your choices, you can just keep extending it. And if, for example, there happens to be one right answer, in this case there wouldn't be, but uh, you would go ahead and type that into the default answer. So that will help you um, calculate that at the end if there's correct answers. By saying done, you'll notice that it's generated that question. And you can just continue building and adding questions in here until you're complete. You'll notice down here at the bottom, you have a couple of choices. One is to share your survey. So when you are ready to give that out to students, if you click share survey, it's going to generate a share link for you. And you can either send that into one of your groups in Office 365 and just have students click on it. If you're familiar with QR codes, you can generate a QR code for that, or you can have the students simply uh, copy that. And at any point, if you wanted to change or add your survey, you could simply come back and edit survey. It also will allow you to view uh, your survey if you just wanted to take a look at what it looks like from a student view. Just kind of double check that your choices are there that you like. And you just continue adding and building questions until you're satisfied with uh, your responses. I'm gonna go ahead and share one with you. just a quick exit ticket that could be used. So I have some questions already here. You'll notice when you open up a saved notebook that it gives you the option here to edit workbook. So you'll have to go ahead and click that. If you have Excel installed on your computer, you can choose the first option. If you're using just the web-based program, you'll choose the online option. And now you'll see that I can come back into the survey and I'm just going to click view so you can see what that looks like. So this is just a quick exit ticket that could be used uh, during an inquiry. So if you have a group presenting, the other students can um, enter an exit ticket. So I just had two quick questions here for the students. Share one new fact you learned from today's presentation. And what is one question you have after today's presentation? Just a really simple exit ticket. Also, share with you uh, a little bit more detailed one, perhaps if you're teaching intermediate. 
So again, I'm going to edit online so we can take a look at the survey. You'll notice that this one has some responses already attached to it, which uh, happen to come up here at the bottom. But I'm going to go ahead and again just view that survey so you can see what that looked like. So again, um, this would have been used again during an inquiry during some research time about partway through their research. So I was asking the students to reflect and think about uh, things that they were finding useful. We had been spending some time doing mini lessons around effective research strategies. So uh, one of the questions was what are some of the advanced techniques you use because we'd already reviewed that. So I put in some just yes or no answers. They used phrase searching, linking words, uh, root words with wildcards, brackets, or other, allowing them just to kind of reflect and, and share with us which of those they've used. I'm also asking the students to share one of the resources they found and used that was useful and why they found that way. So as we come back for some knowledge sharing, we can um, consolidate these with the students and perhaps they can learn from each other some of their research techniques. I also threw in just a, a yes or no question here. We had examined a Google, Google Scholar, which is a website, if you Google that, it brings the students directly to a page that will search through um, academic articles and published materials from universities. So some things that are maybe vetted already for students. And then I just left them with some uh, open-ended questions. What are some issues they're having with their research? And what is their next step? So as the teacher, I can scroll through these answers and perhaps take a look at where I need to do a little mini lesson or perhaps conference with a particular group. And then I all just left them with how many 40-minute uh, blocks do they think they required to complete their research. And again, I can use the share survey to generate that link. Uh, or I can go ahead and edit that. As you can see, I have some responses here, and that makes it really easy as I'm looking at one particular question. I can scroll down and see all of the student responses. I also want to share with you how uh, you can kind of track some of your students. So you'll notice there's a little red icon here. When I click that, a little speech bubble comes up. And when I click that, there's a comment here that I've added. So I'm just uh, noticing that perhaps with this student, I want to conference about a particular thing. So I'm just leaving a little note there for myself to remind myself to go in and talk to that student. And you can do that simply by clicking on whichever box you would like to add a comment, going up to insert and coming over to comment. And it will actually allow you to uh, just type in there. So that's just a quick way to flag some responses. So again, you can just scroll through the answers of your students. Uh, depending on the type of answer, this is a numerical answer. If I click there and hold the shift and just select that whole column, I can now come up and choose one of these graphs if I'd like to see that in a more visual form. Take a look at the student responses that way. And I can either do that individually with um, myself and, and a student, or I can look at this as a whole class, depending on the type of information coming in. So there's a brief overview of Excel survey and how you can use that um, to collect some evidence from your students, either uh, an assessment as for or love, uh, of learning piece. Okay, and I'm just going to come back out here today. So hopefully we've given you a little introduction into Padlet and Excel survey, uh, just to get you started. Keep in mind you will be able to rewatch this video as it will be posted into the video selection of Office 365 under the DP Chat channel. Uh, and we will likely revisit these tools again at another time going a little bit deeper. So thanks for joining us this morning. Hopefully you took something away and have a great Tuesday.